Welcome back to the Lunch Table Food for Thought. I'm Nico Blitz, and before we start this podcast, make sure you subscribe on YouTube, like, leave a comment, and, you know, I hope you like it. I hope you don't dislike any of this content. Right now, man, you know I'm Filipino, and I love putting on for all of my Asian artists because it's really important for us to put on because growing up as an Asian American, you're left with one of two choices. Doctor or lawyer, you choose one. But it's amazing to see other people like myself really push music and the arts. So right now, I have somebody coming all the way from Japan, currently lives in New York. She's on her third album right now. It's called The Truth. She is a progressive soul singer, man. She goes by the name of Now Yoshioka. Now, what's happening? What's good? How's life? (laughs) It's been great. Thank you so much for having me. No, thank you. I mean, let, let me just say this. Arigato. <laughs> Arigato gozaimasu. <laughs> I could never get the second word right. Uh, gozaimasu? Gozaimasu. Yeah, I could never get that right because my girlfriend's uh-huh. Japanese, as yeah. I told you. And um, whenever I try to say Japanese words, she's like, no, you're saying it wrong. <laughs> You're a disgrace to the Japanese culture. I was like, I don't know. I'm no. just trying to. I'm just trying to say it how I want to say it. Oh, but if you say arigato, it's like thanks. Yeah. So it's fine. Arigato. Arigato. <laughs> arigato gozaimasu. So now, like you know, you looked at me very weird when I said like you have two choices. You're either a doctor yeah. or a lawyer. Why does it? Does that stun you? Like I mean, I'm, uh, I grew up in Japan, yeah. and after twenty, I moved to. Um, I came to United States as a first time. So I've never okay. really experienced how uh, Asian American, how they grew up and, and American people look at them. And yeah. I, so it, it was new things for me. So then what was your life growing up prior to coming to the United States? Like how did your parents raise you? Uh, my, my parents uh, has a, an I art background. Okay. So my mother is dress designer and my father is um, interior coordinator. So oh. my mother wants me to become an artist. And so my, my I have two sisters and they're a painter. Oh, wow. So I thought I'm going to become a painter. Yeah. But um, when I become 15 years old, I joined the band and started to sing in front of people. Yeah. And that's where I found this is what I have to do. That's cool. What was your band called? Uh, I don't even... What was it? <laughs> it was like a silly name or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, like, no, you, you can't remember what it was called? I'm, I'm interested. I need time. It's all good. <laughs> okay, so, it's been a long time. So then you were, the, you were the lead singer of your band. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And did you know you always wanted to be like that, the um, lead singer? Like, how did that come about? So, um, so like I said, my family has an art background. So I was always painting or making something in my house. But secretly, I was uh, practicing uh, a song in my bathroom or a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> because I was so ashamed to say, like, I want to become a singer. Yeah. Because, like, no one in, in my house really interested in music. Yeah. I mean, they, they love um, R&B and soul music. That's what, where I got um, all the influences. Uh-huh. But I was a little bit afraid to say it. Well, yeah. Well, why were you afraid, though? Was it because... I mean, like, um, I... At the school, there is a, uh, like, a moment where we have to write down our dreams on the paper. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So I wrote down, I want to become a singer. And my friend told me that, what? You want to be a singer? No, and you're she's not. like, you're crazy. Yeah. Then she erased and wrote down painter. So I was like, okay. At that time, I realized, oh, maybe I shouldn't say it. Because I grew up in Osaka, Japan. Yeah, yeah. And my uh, people surrounded me uh, into art, not music. So that's where I thought maybe I have to hide it. Uh. But when I became 15 years old, it's like I had I had a feeling that I've never felt before when I draw in the art. When I, when I sing in, in front of people, I had a very, very special feeling. So, mm. mm-hmm. so at, at 15 years old, you were comparing 
the feelings you were getting between painting mm -hmm. and actually performing in front of people. Yeah. I mean, I was in uh, art school. So, but yeah, I found music was the one. What, what, so then when was your first performance? Uh, it was a, uh, um, the, yeah, it's, it's, it was 15 years old, I uh, think. Yeah, yeah at the while. school. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, at the school. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. So then it, it wasn't like what a talent, it was a talent show at school or it was just. Uh, yeah, that, that's kind of. That's cool. No, <laughs> I that's mean, like, cool. Uh, it was like a festival mm -hmm. at the school. I don't know how to say it, but. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Um, cause I remember growing up when I wanted to be like a rapper and whatnot, um, performing in front of like that small, just a small crowd of people and oh, you know, yes. the people you grew up with, I was like, yeah, I'm kind of nervous, <laughs> but it's fun. Were you, do you remember feeling like any sense of nervousness or were you really just like, wow, like this is something empowering. This is something really fun to do. Oh, you, um, at the time I was super nervous, but once I started to sing, I was like, this is, this is amazing. I feel like so many emotion from my heart. Yeah. So. Okay. So, you know, it's interesting because I feel like Neo Soul, that originated in like the United States, I believe, soul music and whatnot. And every time I had went back to the Philippines or other parts in mm -hmm. Asia, they were really, they were extremely late on music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think they knew about Michael Jackson until Michael Jackson actually died. <laughs> That's how crazy it was, right? So then what kind of influences were you getting? Because I'm not sure what artists made their way to Japan. Oh, I see. You know see. what I mean? Uh -huh. um, my, all my friends following J-pop, it's mean um, Japanese, Japanese pop, pop yeah. when I grow up. But my, I, I, I feel so lucky that my sister was a big fan of international music. Okay. So she was playing Whitney Houston, Mara Carey, oh, Melly wow. J. Brige. Um, and at the time, uh, Sister Act. Oh, the movie, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was a big hit in Japan. So that's where I started to listen to gospel music, like His Eyes oh, wow. on Sparrow. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's that. I, I feel very lucky, but I didn't have a friend to share. Like, have you ever listened to this song? They they never heard they didn't it. even yeah. know. Mm -hmm. So the literally the only link to American music was your sister. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Did you? Okay, so then and you couldn't even share that with anybody else. Did you feel like you were, I guess, isolated or like this weird person that nobody really understood growing up? Um, yeah, kind of. But um, so but after fifteen years old, um, um. I was 15 years old, and I joined the like a vocal competition. Okay. And um, and I won. And after that, I started to work with a vocal coach, mm. and he was the one who really understand international music. And he always like he's the one who I can really share, like what I like. And he taught me so many things, and uh, he introduced me so many amazing uh, artists. So. Yeah. What what in particular was he teaching you? Uh, he gave me Mary J. Bryge uh, live show DVD, live DVD. <laughs> okay. So that's where I found out like how powerful we can perform at the stage. Yeah. And what else? Um, Janis Joplin. Janis like, Jackson or Janis Joplin. Okay. The rock rock artist. And what else? Yeah, he. He let he let me listen to a lot of um, Michael Jackson. Yeah, and what else? So he was literally having you study all this music, yes. even even aside from just listening to it. It was just here's a live performance of Mary J. Blige. Yes. You need to learn how to perform like uh -huh. her a little mm -hmm. bit. Yes. that's cool. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm very lucky. What? Why do you say that? Um. Because um, early age, I, I was able to listen to those kind of music. And, but at the time, I was still looking for what I, will, I really would like to do. Because at the time, I was singing Japanese song a little bit. And I wanted to become a, a professional artist in Japan. Yeah. So, so I tried to sing pop music and tried to sing rock music and tried to sing so many genres and didn't know what exactly what I'm looking for. Huh. So, 
that's where I really lost my way in my teen. And at the, ta- at the time, I had a family problem and I, I had a problem at the school. Mm-hmm. So I was really depressed. I had a really deep depression and I stopped singing for two years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So then I was stopping singing for two years and that's the time I felt like I need um, real music. Like I need some something that moves me. Yeah. And I decided to move to the United, United States. States. Oh, so then to change my life. So then your your state of being in depression happened when you were what eighteen then? Yeah, seventeen, eighteen. That's crazy. So then, what were you like? What were you doing within those two years before you moved out here? Were um, I was staying at home and crying. Wow. So it was it was like darkest period of my life. Mm-hmm. It was really hard, and um, I didn't know really I didn't know what to do. But my mother told me that like you can do it, you can make your dreams come true, and he really really trusted me. Yeah. So that's why I I made I could make those decisions. So did your parents push you to, hey, if you really want to pursue music, then maybe you should go to the United States? Um, yeah, my mother really helped me. Okay. Yeah, but um, one day I was watching the TV, and there's a two, uh, two hours of um, program of, like, New York. So I, w- I didn't know where to go, but I got inspiration. Maybe I should go to New York. Like, okay. if I go there, maybe amazing things will happen in my life. I didn't know. I've never went to any other country before. Whoa. And I, at that time, I couldn't speak English. Oh, wow. But I was like, let's just do it. Then I went, and I, I encountered amazing music, and um, I met the, um, my vocal coach. In New York, too. Yeah. You know, let, let me tell you this about you. You mm-hmm. are crazy. <laughs> you are you are fucking crazy. <laughs> like what? and I commend you on that because just just that little section of your life, right? Mm-hmm. You didn't know English. You never been anywhere outside of Japan. Yeah. And you go to the most difficult city in the <laughs> United States to try to pursue music. Yeah. Like you are fucking crazy. <laughs> Th- no, that, thank no. <laughs> in the best way possible, you are fucking crazy. Oh, yeah, maybe because, I was. And let me tell you that because not a lot of people, people, it, let me tell you this, people in the United States, we get comfortable so easy. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And I tell all my friends back home, like, hey, all you have to do is move like an hour away, two mm-hmm. hours away, three hours away just to pursue whatever you want to pursue. But a lot of people back home, they're just, no, I'm comfortable, I'm happy here. Oh, yeah. Which, you know, if they're happy there, then that's fine. But I've always felt like in order to achieve, like, true happiness, you mm-hmm. need to go through something of that difficult measure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, you know, it just seems like that was the most difficult. Just doing that jump was very difficult for you. I mean, um, Spain, uh, the time... In Osaka, I, I'm from Osaka. Yeah. So in my teen, like seven, 17, 18, 19, those like depression time was, it was hell. It was really hell. And there is no hope in my life. And every day, like, um, I, I didn't know, like, what should I do? It's like, I'm just staying at home. And my mother is worried about me, mm-hmm. and I'm not doing music, and I didn't go to the school. Like, what am I doing? So that's the that was a difficult, most difficult time in my life. So it was easy for me to imagine something amazing yeah. in other side of the world. Yeah. So like maybe if I go there, something would happen. Like that makes me so excited. Yeah. So. That's really pushed me. But like once I decided to move there and I started to talk uh, to people surrounding me, like except my mother, um, they said, oh, if you go to America, not, nothing going to happen. Mm. Like those negativity started yeah, yeah. to come to me. But I knew that like 
I knew that if I go there, something's going to happen. So, like, let me trust myself and yeah. do what I would like to do. And it was, ha- and after I went there, it, it really happened. Uh, it's really happened. So, so yeah. then what, what happened following your move to New York? So, you said you mentioned your vocal coach. Yeah. So after I moved to United States and um, I thought um, something's going to happen immediately, but it didn't ha- really yeah. happening. And I was working <laughs> in, in the city and, and I tried to find like friends or maybe um, something is going to happen, but didn't happen. And I started to send a message um, to the... Um, at that time, there is a SNS called Mixi. It's like a um, Japanese version of Facebook. Okay. So I sent all all the people who lived in New York and knowing music in the street. Mm-hmm. I sent everyone about I'm doing I'm I'm now Yoshioka and I'm doing music. I'm singer, and mm. I just came here. I can I cannot speak English. I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, do you know anything about music in the street in, in your, New York? And some of then uh, sent me back the message, and uh, she said, "I have I know really nice vocal coach, and why don't you go there?" Ah. And that's where I found out my my. Um, that's how I met with your my, vocal coach. Yeah. Okay, and then what? Was, how was your vocal coach helping you like afterwards? Like, I mean, aside from like training <laughs> your voice, obviously. So but. He, um, he taught me how much I have to um, work make an effort to um, be able to express my feeling. And uh, he suggested me to uh, go to the audition of Apollo Theater Amateur Night. Okay. And yeah, he because of him, I, I, I could have done so many things in New York. I, um, I got the second place of Apollo Theater Amateur Night and running up to the um, top dog. That okay. that was big biggest thing happening in New York. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> crazy. Congratulations. Thank you. So yeah, I'm so ha- uh, I'm so grateful because Japanese singer biggest uh, struggle is language barrier. So when the vocalist would like to to sing in English pronunciation is totally different yeah so it's so difficult to even though we have a feeling to express it's it doesn't come out because of the uh, language, the language barrier. barrier yeah so he really taught me how to express myself and I really learned how to um, sing perfectly and pronunciation yeah. because of him yeah well, you know, it's crazy. Um, you know, after listening to your album, The Truth, mm-hmm. it's like I didn't really hear, like, the way you were pronouncing English words. It's like I could have sworn you've known English for a long time. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't, I didn't hear, like, too much accent or anything. Oh. You know what I mean? Or mm-hmm. nor were you, like, fumbling. So I was like, wow, like, this, you know, it's really well crafted. <laughs> thank you so much. I mean, I, when I talk, I, I still have very Japanese accent, I think. But when I'm singing, like, I'm so glad that people uh, told me that I didn't even think that you're Japanese. Yeah. So, but it's so funny. When I get on the stage, uh-huh. um, like, I perform s- some festivals before, and I get on the stage, and the people look at me like, what's going on? Like, she's Japanese, and she's short, <laughs> <laughs> like this is the performer yeah like <laughs> what can we expect but yeah. once i started to sing people so like they they really um appreciate my music yeah. and even though it's it's no matter i where i come from music is the one who connect us together yeah so that's that that was a really powerful thing for sure and, you know, that goes back to a conversation I was having with you prior to this interview where I was saying at the 88 Rising Festival, mm-hmm. I would just hear people speak in Japanese or Korean or, like, whatever dialect. And even though I didn't understand, it's mm-hmm. like the power of music is just... It doesn't matter what language you speak. If you're just able to enjoy yourself and vibe yes. to something, like, that's all that matters with music. Yes, definitely. I was like, I used to be scared of what 
people gonna judge me because of I'm um, this English is my second language. Yeah. And I came from Japan. But I think that's what makes me special, I think. Yes. Like past um two years um was huge turning point in my life. Like hmm. um I moved to United States, that was the huge one. And Two years ago, I really didn't have a confidence. I was so scared, scared of like um, judgment, like yeah, because I'm very Japanese. Yeah, maybe I should dress like American or like I should I <laughs> <laughs> should I talk like American? But um, I really now I truly could believe that the power of music is. I grew up in Japan, but music really, really saved me. Hmm. And um, do you know the song "A Change Is Gonna Come" by Sam Cooke? I don't. Okay, the the song is um, the lyrics is very powerful. Um, it's been a long, long time coming, but I know a chance gonna come. Oh yes, it will. So those lyrics, every time I sing these lyrics, made me believe that change is gonna come. Mm. Even though I'm suffering or and I'm having difficult times, I yeah. break the, all the boundaries and I I will make it happen. Yeah. So that's how music really saved my life. Wow. That's why I'm singing soul music. Yeah. I'm singing soul music not because of like it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason behind, and I feel like people really feel it uh, through my music. Well, I mean, it's called soul. Yes. If if the artist, if you now is not really presenting your soul, then nobody else is going to feel it. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And even just it, that sounded like a song that you wrote. You know what I mean? <laughs> like just the way you sang it. But it's just like it's one of those things where it's like I really felt that just right now, and I'm like, wow. You know what I mean? Yes. It's a re it's a really good feeling knowing that your music is able to impact someone mm -hmm. through a language barrier, through whatever. Yes. You know what I mean? It's it's an amazing feeling. That's why I think I think even before I got into hip hop, I was like really into R and B and soul mm -hmm. because like you know it, it allowed me to just like cuddle up. Oh, yes. it, it allowed me to just like be sad if I wanted to be sad. Yes. It allowed me to be happy when uh -huh. I wanted to be happy. Yes. And then, yeah, when I would like to cry, I listen to soul music. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we, we, we need to feel unconditional love. Yeah. And if nobody surround you can give you that feeling, you can listen to the music and you can get that feeling. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I just feel like after listening to The Truth, I was getting a lot of that. Oh, you know thank what I mean? You like, so it, much. it was very funky. I think, um, what's the song? Bound? Boundless? Ah, uh, Borderless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Borderless, mm -hmm. Borderless, yeah. And I, I couldn't help but think to myself, like, considering all the information that I knew prior to meeting you, I couldn't help but think, like, wow, like, this, this woman's reaching for the stars. Oh. She, doesn't really, she doesn't really see anything as, like, a... I guess, like a permanent, uh, unsolutionable problem. You know what I mean? Like something that you can't overcome. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, putting a border on yourself is like the worst thing you can do in yeah. life. I really think so. Um, yes, um, Borderless is the song I, I really wanted to express because um, I released my debut album in 2015. Yeah. And at the time, I had a release party in New York at the BB King. And um, at the venue, um, there were a mix of race, races. Yeah, yeah. There, there were Caucasian, there were African American, there were Asian people out there. But the once music started, there's, there was a moment where we just felt the music. And mm. that's, that's, that was the, that's the time I knew that music is like music unites us as one. Yeah. But at that moment, I really felt, oh my God, this is it. I mean, music can be that powerful. I didn't know it. I yeah. didn't really 
I always wanted to believe that, but I've never really experienced before. So that's that's really wanted to express that. Why why is it important for you to, I guess, want to unite people? For example, mm-hmm. yeah, go ahead. Oh, um, yeah. because I feel like um, um, I feel like if you, I grew up in Japan, Osaka. And everybody speak Japanese, but I always had the feeling where um, I can connect with people by music, and music is about freedom and love. That's that's how I feel. But I was looking for that, but I couldn't really find it in Japan. But I found it in United States mm. when I performing there, and I feel like. So many um, amazing vocalists in Japan who who has the same feeling, but they don't. They just don't have a support. Mm. And I feel like so many people gave, gave up because of the language barrier or, or like how the Japanese music industry works. And I don't want that anymore because. Um, World became more. Um, diversity. Diversity. Okay. <laughs> Diverse. Yeah. And um, internet is everywhere, so you can influence by so many different culture and music, and I don't want them to stop because of the. Um, their their culture like how the mm. world works if okay. you have the feeling you can do it anything you yeah, want yeah. so that's a feeling i always have but i couldn't really uh, see the person who've done it before in the music industry so i felt like yeah. i really wanted to do it okay so you want to be you want to be the bridge you want to be that leader to tell other mm-hmm. like you know japanese artists like hey it's okay if you want to do this music, but you should also branch your stuff out to the rest of the world because yeah. there's many more people in the world who can be affected other than everybody who are just in Japan. Yes, definitely. Wow. That's a really good mission, honestly. Thank you. It's really good. And I feel, do you feel like there's, do you feel like there's pr- more pressure on you because you're trying to become that person? Um, or do you not necessarily think about it too much? No, but... I, I don't really think about it. I don't have a, any pressure, but I just, I have a big hope right now. Yeah, yeah. If I have to stay in Japan and do uh, my music domestically, that's going to be the pressure for me. Yeah. Because there is no freedom for, for, for me. Mm-hmm. So right now I just moved to the United States and I'm going to make my fourth album. And there we I'm, go. Yeah. What's that one going to be called? <laughs> Uh, so we just started, so we have to, uh, we still on the process. Oh, okay, but okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At least we know something's coming. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, um, so my next records, um, past two years, I, like I said, was big turning point, and I really needed real music. Like, there is so many new music out there, but I couldn't really find the music moves me strongly. Mm. So I started to listen to Anita Baker and Aretha Franklin. Oh, wow. And when, those, when I listened to those music, I just wanted to cry for no reason. Huh. And that's the, the like, strong emotion. That's what I was looking for. So for my next album, it has to be emotional for sure. Yeah. And something so natural and organic in some way. So that's no, that's that's beautiful. Kind of like the same way when you listen to Aretha Franklin, you just want to mm-hmm. embody that and give that to your fans and other people who may listen to. Yeah, but have have you ever had that um, experience where you just want to cry for no reason when you listen to some music? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. I remember uh, even my friend. He's like a huge Frank Ocean fan. Mm-hmm. And I think just watching, he told me that after watching him perform, he just, you know what I mean? He just cried. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's just a beautiful thing. It's the same way whenever 
I'm in the same arena as, you know, J. Cole, for example. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no matter how many times I see this guy, just knowing how he's helped me get through my experiences throughout life, just seeing him perform, it's just like, wow, like, this is beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. And to know that somebody like yourself who wants to do that for other people is an amazing feat, too. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think you could do it, honestly. I think you could really do that. <laughs> so on a, li- on a lighter note, so there, there are still people who live in Japan and are testing the waters to see if they want to move to the United States or anywhere else. So what differences, what major differences have you seen between United States culture and American culture? American culture and Japanese culture? Yeah. You mean? Okay, yeah. So um, about music? Or just like general. General? Like general. Okay. We have more pollution. <laughs> you know what I mean? I Everybody's think... more angry here. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Japanese culture is um, it's about we caring other people very much. And sometimes it's too much care. And mm. we, if we would like to say something, we sh- in if you if I want to say no to you, I don't say no. Oh, okay. I I always like go around around a little bit and maybe not this time. Yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah. yeah. Because I care. That's that's I I see. This is Japanese culture, and sometimes it's amazing because um, people care. For you and when you go to the like a supermarket or whatever people smile at you yeah. because like we we carrying each other and that's the beauty of Japanese culture I think but American culture is more straightforward you have to say no or yes directly yeah. so that's the big thing and music what um, music culture is has really big difference still um american musicians it's american music is more about improvisation like feeling each other yeah, and you yeah. have to come up um in the moment mm-hmm. but the japanese culture is more um you have to play certain chords you have to play certain hits to mm. express their feelings so a lot of time people look at the chart and that's that makes me a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of like, kind of too perfect. Mm-hmm. So, but um, I think for Japanese music, like J-pop and those kind of music, it's perfect for for them to look at the chart. It's mm-hmm. it's normal. But like my music is R and B or um, soul music, so you have to feel it. Yeah. So that's that's why I really excited to work with American musicians and yeah, yeah. producers. Yeah. So then I guess like what is the like what is the benefit of working the way like Japanese musicians do because everything's so perfect and everything's so on point. Like what 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 are the benefits and what are the negatives that also come with that? Um you um I think uh, when you work with Japanese musicians uh, once you start to rehearse, they know exactly what they have to do. Like, it sounds like on the record. Oh, wow. They can do it. And at the live show, they don't, they don't really do mistakes. Yeah. Like, they don't forget the hits. That's the good thing. Yeah. And, but the bad thing is um, sometimes you just want to feel the vibe and, like, stretch it out and you do, do something creative. Mm. Not, it doesn't really happen so much. Yeah. So American musicians, they they really focusing on like feelings and what they what can build up from um, the records. So I think they are more flexible. I think yeah. on the stage, that's a good thing. And but like the bad thing is like you have to rehearse a lot to. Uh, communicate each other to know better in, in like American music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I totally feel that because I feel like American music. Oh, I will give you a perfect example now okay. that I just thought about this. Right, so I have 
I have two friends, mm -hmm. both musicians. One's, one's a rapper, one's a singer. The male, he's over here from, he's from Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And he's only been making music for, I want to say like a year, mm -hmm. right? And he says, yo, I just want to, I just want to put music out, put music out. I don't care if it's good. I don't care if it's bad. It's just like how it is right now. And you know, he's gotten good responses off of mm -hmm. that. His girlfriend, she's actually, she's from Korea and how she was raised, she was more like, no, I need to, I need to perfect everything. Everything is like super on point. And like one, one music feels good and the other music sounds really you know sounds oh. good and you know what i mean just like just seeing those two differences alone kind of relates to how you're saying mm -hmm. in american music it's like yes it it's a lot of good feeling but that doesn't also that doesn't always translate that it's like oh, good I quality see. music mm -hmm. whereas in you know japan it's like yeah it's perfect music but you don't get that feeling oh yeah mm -hmm. so what i would like to do is combine <laughs> <laughs> Combine both the good side. <laughs> I, it's. I think it's possible. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to do it. Let's get the good feeling and, and the good quality sound and put that shit together. <laughs> no, no, no. That that's really smart. That's really <laughs> fucking smart. I really like that. Oh yeah. Honestly. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, like I think I think in order to in order to become like that person or mm -hmm. you know become the person where you open it up open the doors for everybody else like if that's not achieved then you're kind of doing it wrong but I think you know I think you're going about it in a very professional and also like spiritual and emotional like matter Thank you so much so That's cool so now like um you know the projects you have like no clue when the project is going to be coming out. So then what do you, what, what are you doing to prep for that album or what are you doing like before anything else new happens? Uh, for my future? Yeah. For your future. Like, are you performing more like concerts, mm -hmm. more tours? Oh yes. So live show is one thing I cannot live without. Okay. So I'm definitely going to do more shows in United States. So okay. I'm, I think I'm going to announce very soon. And uh, at the same time, I'm still working on my new records, and uh, we are willing to release in next year. Okay. So a little like new like things. January next year, or <laughs> like <laughs> or like, are you talking about one year yeah, from now? I, I think after summer or something. <laughs> okay, that's okay, that's those fair. kind of area. Yeah, but, yeah. So yeah, I'm very excited about it. Cool, cool. Mm -hmm. Um, before I forget, we were having a conversation about Yuna. Prior to yeah. this, I don't even know where we were in that conversation, but mm -hmm. what, what were you going to talk about in regards to Yuna? Oh, so Yuna, um, I love her um, music first, but I found out she, um, sh she's Asian. Yeah. But um, I'm so happy to see she was performing in Essence Festival. That's the uh, festival in... Yeah, New, New Orleans. Orleans, and that's the festival I wanted. To, I was. I always wanted to perform. Huh. Um, I think eighty or ninety percent of the audience and performer is African American. Yeah, it's it's ninety nine percent. Ninety nine percent, something. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's it's celebrating um, African American culture. That's a part of it, I think. Yeah. But she was there, and I. I'm, I was so proud because it's like um, music connect her to, to perform there and people love her. Yeah. And that's the power of music. So I was so happy, so, so happy to Aww. see that. Because I couldn't really find an Asian vocalist in this music industry. Like R&B, right. so... And I figure out there is n no... Um, Japanese vocalist who um, are nominated in Grammy Award. Oh, wow. I think no Japanese and no Asian, maybe. And it made me a little bit sad because it must be some, someone has to be at least nominated, but mm -hmm. I think there is no. So how come, why, how come Japanese haven't acquired that feat yet? Like, how come Japanese 
musicians haven't been able to become nominated in the um, Grammys? I think um, guitarists and pianists, they, they are. Musicians are there, but um, not the vocalists. Yeah. So I, I don't know. And I, th- I think it's somebody has to be there and open at the door. Hmm. So this year I submit my album to Grammy Award first time in my life. And I don't know what's going to happen, but I, I would like to knock the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, at least you're trying. <laughs> yeah. At least you're trying. And that's mm-hmm. the important thing. I mean, I, I, it, it's kind of like a blur to me too because... I think the fact that like your family is so art driven mm-hmm. and there's a lot of music coming out from Japan, it really just shocks me that nobody's been nominated for right? a Grammy from Japan or like a Japanese vocalist. Mm-hmm. Is Do you think there's just not enough people who want to do it or? Um, I think um, there is no one done it before. That's why like um, even though they're amazing vocalists, um, are in Japan, but not so many, um, like record record labels support their dreams mm. yet. But I think, like I like I do, there is so many people who who would like to achieve that. So what do you think? It is just a matter of time before we that's, finally get the nomination. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's. Um, that's that's gonna happen in the future for sure. Not not for Japanese, but the Asian. Yeah. Um, that's how I believe. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope you get the first Grammy nomination. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Yoshioka, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. Um, so let everybody know where they could find you and they could find your music online. Okay. Um, I have a official website now Yoshioka dot com, N A O Y O A. Y O S H I O K A dot com. <laughs> and I have a Twitter and a Facebook and Instagram, and also my music on Spotify and Apple Music and everywhere. So nice, nice. Thank you so much. Now, Yoshioka, I'm Nico Blitz. This is the lunch table. Amazing conversation, and it's a pleasure to have you here. How do you say, oh, is it uh, sayonara? Yeah. yeah, sayonara. Sayonara. <laughs> <laughs>